Brady Miller here, and we got another gear list. Just so happened it finally worked out. We made our schedules work, went to Texas, chased Audad, and we did it the way I like to do it. Obviously, like every animal, there's a million different ways to hunt them, but I really wanted to hunt Audad backpack style. And luckily, the place we hunted had no roads and it was a backpack hunt, so it was pretty intense. And I figured it'd be a great chance is to walk through the gear we used. Temperatures were, you know, maybe 50s, mid 50s at night. Uh, in the 90s during the day, so it was very, very hot. So it was a lot of lightweight gear and a ton of water. So it was still pretty intense of a backpack hunt. So very walking through all the gear I carried on the hunt and maybe some reasons why I carried those specific pieces of gear. So I'll jump right into it right now. So for the clothes worn on this hunt, again, temperatures were hot in the 90s. So everything's gonna be lightweight. So for an upper layer, I was wearing the Born Primitive Sun shirt. The reason why I really liked the shirt was obviously hunting in hot temperatures, you need a hood. So this hood is very great because it is a deep, big hood. So it actually goes all around my face quite a bit in the sides. Has a nice little collar on the, on the front here. And as you can see here, this is, it stinks. It hasn't been washed yet since I got back from Texas. It got back, you know, a few days ago. Um, it does have thumb holes in the, on it, which is a great piece to have because I got long arms. So I was able to keep those pieces out all the way. But if I need to, I can, you know, pull it up when it's really hot when we're hiking around. And it does have some sun blocking properties in it too, which again is gonna be great on those really hot, you know, early season hunts or a, you know, late April hunt like this was. So really impressed with this piece. Um, used it the whole time. It was just my base layer hiking around, uh, slept in it, everything in it, wore it every single day for the duration of the hunt, which was four days. So really love that piece. Uh, for the bottoms, I wore the Born Primitive Frontier Pant Light. And I've been actually wearing these quite a bit during the spring, going out in the desert, shoot my rifle. And what I really loved about these pants is they're actually made for a guy who's tall like me. So these are a 32, 36. So they have a 36 inseam, which is great for me. So no longer when I'm sitting down, you know, trying to glass, do I have my pants raised up, which is a great feature to have, especially when you're hunting in the desert. When I didn't want to wear gaiters, it's one of the few times I did not bring gaiters on, on the hunt because it was gonna be so hot. But also the pants, when they went down low enough for me, is also helping keep some debris and you know everything that wants to stab you and stick you when you're in the desert away from you. Another cool thing about the pant, which you know I grew to love actually, was it has a lot of pockets. Obviously, you have a zipper pocket on the side. You have a just a normal pocket without a zipper on this side. You have zippers in the back, and then a non-zippered on the back butt area. But it has a cell phone holder. And normally, I just toss my cell phone down the side but I was actually using the side pocket for my wind meter and my rear rest. And then the cell phone pocket was actually really easy. Even with my, you know, 12 Pro Max with an all-in digiscoping adapter, I could fit it in there, pull it out really easy. And I actually grew to really enjoy it being on the left side because whatever, I might have something in my right hand, trekking pole, holding up my gun, and I could easily reach in, grab my phone out, drop some waypoints, navigate around the mountain. I thought that was a really cool feature. It does have some uh, reinforced knees. And as you can see here, you know, Obviously they're really wrinkly from traveling back home, but they held up great in the desert. Um, everything there, like I said, wants to stab you and stick you. And so having a good pair of pants that's gonna protect your legs a little bit, but also keep it breathable because you don't wanna have a heavyweight pant on somebody's late season hunt. So reinforced knees was really great. On the backside, you do have a reinforced um, butt area there. So when you're sitting down on the rocks, again, everything that's gonna stab you, it's gonna protect your backside a little bit, which is gonna be important because then you can glass longer. So great pair of pants, super lightweight no real problems with them at all. And those two pieces are pretty much what I wore every single second of the hunt. So the jacket I actually wore again in the mornings or in the evenings is the Born Primitive um, Tundra Jacket Light. This is a synthetic down jacket. And like I said, I didn't have to use it very, very much, but I did pack it just for, again, those mornings and those evenings. And I actually have a crazy story. So the night I killed my ram, we decided to uh, not go all the way back down the mountain to camp. We had a base camp set up and we elected to just sleep on the mountain. And I was glad I had a puppy jacket with me. It was still brutally cold, but I was very glad I had this jacket. So I didn't really, you know, didn't hike around in it at all because the temperature was really hot, just mornings and evenings um, when we were sitting there glassing, but super lightweight jacket, really impressed with it. Actually love the fit of the jacket on me because I'm six foot five, you know, 195, and it worked really, really well. So I love a lightweight puppy and you usually always see me carry a lightweight puppy on all my hunts. Belt, just my standard 
old school. I don't even think they make it anymore. The Sika Stealth Belt, just what I've always used on the hunts. And because we did have a chance of some weather coming in, it didn't rain at all, but I still packed my Sika Dew Point rain jacket. Super lightweight. Never had to use it. Sat in the bottom of my backpack the whole time and just was a piece of paperweight basically, but luckily it doesn't weigh that much. So I had this jacket with the whole time in case it was raining. And then since it was a desert and it's hot and there's a ton of sun, I did bring along my Leupold uh, sunglasses. Can't remember the exact model of these, but these are just what I usually wear on every single hunt with a little lanyard on the back. And then hat, this is the uh, Go Hunt Hydra hat. And as you can see here, what I really impressed about, so one of our apparel guys, Kevin, he, I can't remember what type of coating he has on these hats, but when we buy these hats, they come with a very unique coating that doesn't have sweat stains. So this hat was, you know, four or five days in the mountains, hiking around in the sun. It looks like it's still brand new. You can only see a few little wear marks from blood and dirt when I was skinning on the animal, grabbing my hat and adjusting it, but it looks great still. Footwear, I took my go-to Hanwag Alverstone 2 boot. These things are phenomenal. I love these boots for early season hunts and it still works great in the desert. So great boot, really enjoyed hiking in them, hunting in them, super comfortable to me. Got a decent amount of flex, which I love. I love a flexible boot. And that's why I brought that one on this hunt. And then socks, again, I don't even think they make these ones anymore. I've just had these for 10 or 15 years. These are the uh, darn tough, not sure what, model but darn tar from marina wool socks and they're just a little shorty so just kind of packed everything pretty lightweight on the clothing department no gloves no beanie because again the temperatures are hot i didn't really need that sort of stuff so i got sunburned as you can see so that's the clothes now time for sleep system so sleep system again is very basic for this hot you know environment that i was going into so sleeping pad same one i always use it's just the thermorest neo air uber light Super lightweight, doesn't have a lot of R value. Works well for me, so I'm gonna to continue to keep using it. Uh, shelter, I actually brought with the Stone Glacier Skyscraper. Two person tent, I'm not gonna take it out here. I'll just show you that's all in here. So I actually have the uh, footprint. I always like to have a footprint whenever I'm, whenever I'm using a freestanding shelter, just to help protect the bottom of my shelter. Shelters are expensive to begin with, so I will still carry the footprint just to put underneath the ground and then, you know, pitch the uh, skyscraper and I have it in a, not even sure what size this is, but this is a Sea to Summit compression sack and actually compresses this really, really small. I think it'll actually get down to about here to that size. So it's definitely overkill for a hunt like this. I didn't really need a shelter this big. I thought about bringing, you know, one of the lighter weight ones, the uh, Sky Air, but I love having a side entry shelter. So I went with this and I still packed the rain fly, but I never actually pitched it because it never rained. So that was again, just extra weight but again, prepare for the worst. So I still had that with on this hunt. And then of course I got the poles for the skyscraper and the assortment of stakes that I needed. And since I didn't have to use the rain fly, I had a bunch of extra stakes, so. And then uh, instead of running a sleeping bag, or I guess I should say, instead of using a sleeping bag, I opted for a quilt. So this is the Western Mountaineering Astrolite. It's their long version quilt. As you can see here on the back, it just has the uh, you know, little bungee cords you can kind of wrap it around your sleeping pad or for me i just lay right on top of it inside here and when it got really hot basically i was just sleeping in my clothes this is the very it's an older version i don't think they make this colorway anymore i've had this for i don't know over six years but super lightweight and i think it's a uh, 27 degree rating so perfect uh quilt for hot temperatures almost forgot about one thing so i quilt I put inside this um, Sea to Summit. It's an extra small compression sack in this thing since it's so ultra light already and takes up minimal space and throw in a compression sack like this. It's literally probably about a ball like that big. So I can compress it really small so it doesn't fit, you know, a lot of room in my backpack. So get a compression sack no matter if you have a quilt, sleeping bag, compress that thing down. And then once you get home, big tip, make sure you take your sleeping bag and take it out the compression sack because compression sack, you don't want your, to wreck your down. So instantly when I got home, took this baby out, threw it over one of my railings in my house and let it just puff back up. So, all right, now time to jump into the optics setup, which is always one of my favorite areas to talk about. I'll start off with the tripod. So this is the Siru ST124, which has been my go-to kind of 
you know, middle of the road, slightly heavy, really stable tripod, especially when using a big spotter. Um, on top of it, I have the Siru VA5 head. Love this head. Again, it works great with a heavy spotter. And then I removed the normal handle that comes in the VA5 head and replaced it with the Asiac to save me some ounces there, but doesn't sacrifice any glassability. So great tripod. I can, you know, sit. I could stand probably if I needed to, but do all my glassing sitting down. Spotting scope. Again, it's the the Hubble or the Eyes of God, whatever you want to call it. It's the Swarovski ATX with the 115. And I have a Siru plate on the bottom to attach to the tripod. And on the top part here, you'll see I have the all-in um, digiscoping adapter put on there. And what I really like about this, it doesn't inhibit me from actually glassing through it normally. It's very comfortable to glass through. And then again, it works really great for just slapping your phone on there to digiscope. Really, really handy. And a lot of times when I'm doing some long distance glassing, I will take this off because I do not like to have anything dangling in the wind on my spotting scope. But really love this setup. Great for digiscoping, great for glassing. It's heavy, but again, optics are gonna help you find animals to kill said animals, so I love it. Like I said, have the all-in system on my phone, 12 Pro Max, use it for digiscoping, taking some photos, videos, and also using Go Hunt Maps. Then optic-wise in the, in the bino harness, I have the marsupial large bino pack here. I have two pairs of contacts in the front because I'm blind as a bat. So if I ever have one pop out in the wind, I'm gonna put one of those in really quick so I can actually see and take an animal. On the back side, I always keep an extra uh, rangefinder battery in the back. And since it was a dry hunt, I did not put this in a little Ziploc bag. I always keep that one handy. You never know when your rangefinder battery is gonna die. I don't trust I don't care what rangefinder it is, if it says 100% on a hunt and it goes down to zero, you're screwed. So carry some extra rangefinder batteries. I do have a little puff of wind checker on the side. And then for optics, I have the Sig Sauer Zulu 6 um, 16 by 42 image stabilization binos. Absolutely love these. You guys all knew I you know, carried them to Tajikistan last year specifically because of the wind. It was really windy in this hunt. And I just love acquisition I can get when I'm hiking, exhausted. I can pull these up, switch it on, image is stable. I don't need a glass off a tripod. I've been using, using these off and on on some mule deer hunts as well. Really, really enjoy these binos. And they do take a AA battery. So I did pack, you know, just a few extras just in case. These batteries last a long time. But again, I'm on a hunt. I'm backpacking. I don't have any batteries. I can't glass. I always carry extra batteries. I do have a little lens cloth in here as well. And then I have another rangefinder battery that I'll keep in my optics kit here. So that's a lot of that. And then on the side for my rangefinder, I have the six hour Kilo 8K rangefinder with applied ballistics. Again, I just can't live without this rangefinder. It just works and grabs all my atmospherics, grabs all my ballistics, makes me make that perfect one shot kill every single time. So I have that in the marsupial rangefinder pouch. And then jumping over, you can't glass unless you can glass comfortable. So Ryan Lampers created this slick, awesome, stealthy hunter glassing pad. It's been everywhere with me and worked well for sitting down glassing. Cause like I said, if you're comfortable, you're gonna be glassing more efficiently. And then it's nice too, when you have to kneel around camp, deal with things, cook, or you're cutting up an animal, I will kneel on this. As you can see, it's a lot of blood and stuff from the last couple of years using it. So great little glassing pad, very lightweight. Uh, my little optics pouch, this is like one of those marsupial swing out pouches. And I usually carry a lot of optics accessories in here. So I have a big assortment of Zeiss lens wipes. Big fan of keeping your optics clean. If you've heard Cody Nelson talk at all, you know he's big on optics cleanliness and he's definitely roasted me a few times for not keeping my optics clean. So I try to keep these optics as clean as I can, especially for all my camera lenses and that sort of thing too. So big pack of that. Inside here, I have a giant assortment of memory cards. I don't know why I ever carry this many memory cards. Don't really need to. And, but yeah, just, well, can't hold on to them because they are, yeah, don't need that many. But yeah, got a bunch of them with me all the time. I do have a little self-timer remote here. I can just, you know, put my camera on a tripod if I'm by myself, snap some pictures. So that always goes with me. Inside here, I have a pocket juice, um, portable battery charger. Just works well for my cell phone, my in-reach, my headlamp, wherever I need to charge. And this is also then where I keep my cords. This is a USB-C cord 
for um, my Garmin in reach and my headlamp. And this is just a micro USB cord for anything else I need to charge when I'm out there. And then inside here too, I always have a little tiny lens pen. Jeez, I have a hard time holding on to things today. So yeah, that's all the stuff I carry in my little optics pouch. And it's nice too, once you get your system dialed, I know where to go to find everything. That's why optics accessories go in this little pouch, usually goes in the top lid, so it's handy, easy to grab, easy to use. And I know where everything is at. So that is optics in a nutshell. All right, this is my pride and joy. This is my baby. This is what uh, made that guy sitting back there right now and a mountain lion that I also shot on this hunt. Uh, this is my Browning X-Bolt long range 300 rum. It has a McMillan A35 adjustable stock. Um, scope is one I switched to this year just to save a little bit of weight. Added some more magnification. It's the Vortex Razor. Gen 3 6236 by 56 rifle scope. Absolutely, I've grown to love that rifle scope. Obviously, I got front and end scope caps, Vortex Precision, or just a Vortex throw lever, sorry. Um, Area 419 match rings that I bedded the lower part of the rings myself. Really enjoyed using those rings. Just wanted to test them out this year, just came out and been loving them. I have the Flatline Ops um, Recon scope level. Right there you can see, and on the side I have another one, it's their Flatline Ops Tango that mounts on the pick rail. I have a Tally 20 MOA pick rail mounted here. Also that is bedded on a action with no release agent because I don't believe in using a release agent on the action because I'm never going to take the scope off. Or should I say, never going to take that rail off. I have a Timney trigger on the bottom set to pound and a half. Uh, short action precision two round ammo holder mount on the side here because again you guys all know all my rifles I single feed them all because I load them really really long so yeah single feeding works for me um, if it doesn't work for you test it out maybe it will work for you but I just don't believe in sacrificing accuracy by loading to mag length so I don't do that on the bottom of my rifle I have a full Arca from Salmon, Ribbon, Salmon River Solutions and I have you know, put T-nuts in there and bedded that up into my rifle. It's really great because I can have my um, MDT Skypod. I can move it up and down. I can take this off and shoot off my tripod if I need to. Like I said, it is the MDT Skypod Gen 2 single pull bipod. I have a short action precision lever on the front so I can easily adjust the uh, pan back and forth on the rifle. I have a Quake rifle sling mounted to the bottom here and I actually drilled um, this little hole through here so I can attach my um, sling to the um, bipod. On the, on the front, I have the Snowy Mountain Rifles Snowflake three port titanium brake. It's a 5 8 24, set for 30 cal. Absolutely love the brake, big fan of brakes. Allow me to track my impacts perfectly and they can tame down the recoil if you're the person who needs your recoil tamed a little bit. But I just would like it for first round impact so I can see exactly where I shoot. Go with some ammo. So on this hunt, I just had 10 rounds in the Go Hunt ammo wallet. This is actually a sneak peek of version two. So we got a lot of feedback that people do want the bullet keeper thing on the top. I really don't see the need for it, but I can see some who might want that on the top and it has a zippered pouch on here and a new really cool colorway that Go Hunt uh, throwback OG camo. So 10 rounds in here and the rounds I was using are uh, these little bad boys. So 208 Barnes LRX um, bullets. These are copper bullets with ADG brass. I got 215 match magnum primers and H1000 powder at 90.4 grains. I believe the overall length of these is a little over four inches. So seated up very, very long, but they hit hard and absolutely love them. Great accuracy, close range, long range, whatever I need to do. I have the Rugged Ridge rear support system. Again, just love this for putting it underneath the rifle, wherever I may need it. You know, I can always adjust it for how tall I want it, go really low, really tall in the medium, and it fits in my pocket. So this will always go with me on every single hunt. Moving over here, I have my Kestrel 5700 Elite with applied ballistics. Again, have all my dope in here. It's matched with my rangefinder. Use this for grabbing real-time 
um, environmentals, wind, temperature, you know, barometric pressure, all that good stuff, density, altitude, all that will help me take that perfect first round impact. And it's just a backup solution too, but mainly I use it for wind. And like I said, if I need to, I'll do some ballistics with it as well. Um, front part, or not the front part, I guess one of the main areas that I love to have is protection for my rifle scope. I do not want my rifle scope to get damaged. Yes, I have very quality rings. I do all my rifle work myself. Everything is dialed, torqued down perfectly. But again, rifle gets, rifle scope gets dinged, gets knocked off. That's not going to be good. So I always like to have a rifle protected cover. This is just a marsupial um, rifle scope cover. Fits on here great. I really like that it has these little elastic guys in the front. And it will go over top of my muzzle brake that eliminates the need to, uh, you know, tape into my barrel, but I will take some electrical tape and tape that up as well if I'm going on some hunts that are going to be a little inclement weather. So I believe that is everything on my rifle in a nutshell. Again, absolutely love this 300 rum. It's a Browning X-Bolt. Oh, I didn't mention that. I also bed um, a stock of my rifle myself just to match everything perfectly, but I believe... A rifle weighs 14 pounds, somewhere around there. It's a new scope, so I can't remember exactly what it was, but it did cut some weight there, but roughly around 14 pounds. And I'm totally happy to carry this weight on a backpack hunt, on a truck hunt, whatever it may be, because my rifle is sole purpose is to take an animal. So I'm willing to sacrifice some weight because I know it'll shoot perfectly every single time. So that's my baby. All right, I figure now is about the best time to go through some miscellaneous gear. So between water filtration, solar panel, kill kit, whatever it may be, we're gonna run through that right now. Gosh, not run through it, we're gonna go through it right now. Sorry, YouTube people. Uh, start off with the Go Hunt Ultralight Nalgene, just a lighter weight version of Nalgene. As you can see, I've uh, beat the crap out of it already this year hunting, just to see what I could put up with, and it can handle a lot. So Ultralight Nalgene, always great to have. Uh, on this hunt too, so I have this on here, but I actually did not use this exact one. So water was something that was very precious in the mountains. There was no water to get. Uh, ended up being a little bit of water when I killed my ram, but the reason I have this on here, instead of using this one, I actually had a 10 liter Drome Dairy MSR container. So I had 10 liters of water. I had my platypus is a three liter, this full and I had this Nalgene full. So right there, that is 14 liters of water I carried up into the mountains, which equals almost 31 pounds of extra weight. And that's a lot. So water was uh, one of those interesting things where you're rashing it every single day. Every, every single time you take a sip of water, you realize you want another sip, but you're like, wait, I need to save that water for later in the day. So that was really a challenging aspect of this hunt, but I love those hunts that challenge your mind, challenge your body, makes it fun, makes a cool story afterwards. So that's that. I uh, carry just this anchor, um, portable three panel solar panels, really lightweight. And I do enjoy that it has three panels and it charges things really, really fast. So I just had this for a long time, love it. Lightweight, I'll keep bringing it up there for charging uh, camera batteries and all this other miscellaneous stuff I need to charge. Garmin InReach Mini 2, backcountry peace of mind. I always have that with stove system, um, just a jet boil flash, a little pot and the stove. And as you can see here, I do not have a fuel canister. I made trail, pack that, and he somehow illegally packed that onto the airplane and flew with it and did not get caught. So great job trail. All right, now we're gonna jump into the kill kit. So the kill kit's just the uh, Stone Glacier camp pocket. Inside here, I have a bunch of miscellaneous stuff that don't really fit in a kill kit, like my med kit. And every time I do one of these gearless videos and I grab this, I realize I need to go home, open it up and actually analyze what I need to add and subtract. Because I can't remember the last time I've actually used anything in here. I see there's a bunch of open bandages. So I obviously have, but I need to probably replenish my uh, first aid kit. All right, and other things I have in here, I have the WorkSharp knife sharpener and I carried that with because I have the Montana Knife Company Speed Goat Mini. Really slick knife, has a lot of paracord in the back, still fits very well in my large hands. Very, very sharp, very durable. It was great for uh, caping, deboning, and getting into the skull to uh, remove the hide off the skull. So awesome, awesome knife. Really love that knife, durable. And I also took on here, ooh, I see I don't have it in here, but I also had my Goat Knives um, Ibex Mini. 
was just caping out, or not caping out, cleaning my skull the other night, and that's sitting in the back backyard of my house. So, but with that, I did carry at least, I think I had five replaceable 60A uh, blades for the goat knife. Water filtration, I packed this guy and only used it uh, once. Like I said, after I killed my ram, there was actually a little spot in the bedrock down below where he was kind of hanging out that there was some water and I filtered a metric ton of water and then carried that back up on top of the mountain. But SteriPen, really, really nice, lightweight. Um, took me a long time to actually trust one because basically sticking a lightsaber in your bottle and hoping it works. You don't really know if it's doing anything, but I haven't got six cents and it can charge with a micro USB cord through the power bank or solar panel if you need to. Peaks Backcountry Duo Headlamp. Absolutely love this headlamp. Rechargeable with the USB-C. Super durable, pops off. Very, very bright red light and bright white light as well. And the greatest feature I love about it too, it has a great lock system. So it's not gonna turn on in the backpack when you're hiking around. Here in here is a bunch of this miscellaneous Advil. What else do I got? Some salt pills. And yeah, salt and electrolyte pills and Advil. I have my really tiny toothbrush and my very tiny Colgate um, toothpaste that I get made fun of a lot by friends that go hunting with me, but got to brush your teeth when you're in the mountains. And the Go Hunt Essentials titanium spork. And that's it. That's all the kill kit. Uh, I forgot to mention this with my rifle, but just some wraparound ear protection. You're going to shoot a big gun, nasty break, you need some ear protection. Make sure you bring that with. For this hunt, I took one of the Peaks Sissy Sticks Backcountry Elite trekking poles. And I did have the uh, rubber tip on here because since I was flying, I did not want this to stab through my nice, expensive Yeti duffel bag. So I just put that on there when I'm traveling, took that off. And I just had one trekking pole because sometimes it's really convenient just to have one trekking pole, especially when I'm trying to hold on to my rifle or do whatever else in my other hand instead of having two. And game bags, my game bags are actually at home right now um, with my hide and some meat and stuff, but these are very similar game bags to what I use on the hunt. These are just a caribou gear, carnivore, carnivore three, uh, super ultra light game bags. So got to have some game bags and I believe that's it. So that wraps up all the miscellaneous gear, kill kit, trek and pull, water, and again, lots of water for a desert hunt like this. So once again, I almost forgot something on here, but every time I do one of these hunts where I'm traveling, I will carry a set of fix-it sticks. Just really nice to uh, have to fix something on my rifle, tighten something. I have this, usually keep this at the truck, but I have it with me when I'm traveling. Just a bunch of different bits, torques, and all the tools I need. So again, if you're gonna travel on a hunt, you need to have some backup gear. So this is one of those backup pieces of gear that I will keep for some peace of mind. This is one of those areas I have pretty much never changed because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But this year I decided to uh, experiment a little bit, see if I can save some weight and just try something new. So this is the Stone Glacier Terminus 8700 backpack. It weighs four, four pounds. Saves a bunch of weight there from uh, my Sky Guide backpack I used to run in the past. And I have a cotton carrier attachment right here for my um, Sony camera. But overall, so far, I'm in love with this pack. I packed up my Audi with it. I packed up my Mountain Lion with it. Um, the only thing I was ever hesitant at first, it does not have a dedicated load shelf. Everything is internal in this backpack, has a big sleeve in it with some blood ports. Um, down at the bottom to leak out all the blood and stuff like that. So you do have to put your meat inside the bag, but again, it's protected from all your other gear. And I had this thing, like I said, jam-packed with a bunch of water, a bunch of gear, and it held the weight phenomenally. So like I said, I've used my same other bag and frame probably for seven years. So it's finally the time I uh, decided to change it up. But loving it so far, I'm gonna use this um, the entire 2023 season and give it a whirl. And then aside here, I just added the uh, Stone Glacier um, Hydra holster, water bottle holder, dealio. So yeah, super, super stoked on this backpack. Really love it. And I'm going to continue to use it on a spring bear hunt coming up. So that's a backpack in a nutshell, but love it so far. And I know I'm going to continue to love it as a 
seasons go on and as the uh, temperatures drop and I have more late season gear, but because it's an 8700, I'll be able to fit a lot of gear, a lot of camp and a lot of meat and hopefully some hides and some big old racks in there. So yeah, Stone Glacier Terminus 8700, backpack of choice. So this was a hunt that was a little different than norm. Normally I like to drive to all my hunts, so I have a lot of extra gear in my truck. This one we flew, so I had to pack everything a little bit differently. So for this trip, packed everything in the Yeti Panga 100 liter bag, and I also had my SKB rifle case that I packed a bunch of my gear in. This held my backpack, actually can fit my um, Terminus 8700 Stone Glacier backpack with a bunch of my optics all protected inside here. And then I use this for a bunch of my food and a bunch of other random gear items. This is the Yeti M30 Hopper on the way there. And on the way back, it had Mountain Lion, had my Odd Hide, and a bunch of the meat in it. And then we actually had another duffel bag with uh, the Odd horns and some more meat. So these are the two bags that work really well for me on most of the hunts when I go on, when I fly. They work perfectly in conjunction with my rifle case to hold all my backpacking gear. But that is a quick overview of everything I took for this Texas odd ad hunt. So again, it's a hunt that's a little different than the norm. Really hot temperatures, try to pack some lightweight gear. Um, got to use some of the born primitive gear that I was really excited to uh, use it on the hunt because I've been you know wearing a lot in the office and hiking and shoot my rifle a lot. So yeah, took an awesome odd ad. Couldn't be more excited. Passed up a lot of ram, trying to look for an old, you know, heavy mass ram. And this ram's everything I can dream about. 30 and a quarter horn length and uh, yeah, probably over 13 years old. So giant ram, shot a mountain lion as well. Pretty cool to shoot two spot and stock mountain lions without dogs in less than six months. So yeah, that's gear in a nutshell. So if you have any questions about gear I'm using, um, recommendations for your upcoming hunt, definitely let me know and drop them in the comments below. I always love talking gear, talking strategies with people. And yeah, wish everyone the best of luck in 2023.